Africa. It's a continent of water, boasting more wetlands than anywhere else on the planet at over 31,000 square kilometers of lakes, rivers, and swampland. The continent's wettest stretches receive over 4,000 millimeters of rain each year. That water is swept across mountains and through valleys into some of the world's longest rivers. But rivers are much more than just flowing water. They are complex ecosystems consisting of interactions between fish, mammals, plants, and other living and non-living things. Systems like this need energy. Even the microbes and algae at the very bottom of the food chain need nutrients to grow. But where do a river's nutrients come from? In sub-Saharan Africa, the answer lies in part with one of the world's largest mammals. The hippopotamus is a semi-aquatic animal that spends its days in the water, resting, socializing, and defecating. As night falls over the savanna, these tanks emerge from the river to eat. Their size means that they have big appetites. They consume about 20 kilograms, or 40 pounds, of grass every night. All of that adds up to several tons of plant matter per hippo per year, and the majority of it ends up in the river as dung. Could this be a natural fertilizer? These nutrients wouldn't be in the river if it weren't for hippos, and the rich plant and animal life in and around the river may depend on this food source. Once they're in the water, where do the nutrients go? And who uses them? And how do ecological relationships change with changing nutrient levels? To answer these questions, ecologists, biogeochemists, and ecohydrologists from UC Berkeley and Princeton University have banded together to study the Iguazo Nyiro River watershed in central Kenya. To understand how important hippo nutrient subsidies are to the river and its organisms, we're using a variety of techniques, including water chemistry, manipulative field experiments, and even the world's first effort to electronically track hippo movements. Since the year 1900, more than half of the world's wetlands have disappeared, victims of development and overexploitation. Due largely to habitat destruction, hippos are now listed as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List, and their populations continue to decline. Where humans and hippos compete, hippos tend to lose out. We're committed to outreach and education at our field site in Kenya. We hope that making ecology and conservation relevant and comprehensible to local communities will help, in some small way, to slow the hippo's decline. In the meantime, our team aims to discover how the changes that we make to wetlands, watersheds, and climate influence the ecology of the hippopotamus and its home, and what the loss of hippos might mean to these African rivers that depend on their life-giving nutrients.